Greetings everyone, this is Stanley and you watching Montreality. My story, man, is simple and plain. I'm a Midwestern boy from Ohio, just trying to, you know, find a savage, I mean, I'm on a savage journey to American dream, trying to find my, you know, calling in this world, what I'm here for. I don't know, I'm soul searching, I guess. <laughs> oh man, I used to be a bad student and then I became a good student and, uh, you know, I'm just someone who's very diligent. I hate to uh, feel like I can't do something or achieve something, so I, I work hard at everything until I, you know, perfect it. <clears throat> man, I've had every job you could think of. If you name it, I've had it, honestly. I've done everything from catering at country clubs to working in sneaker stores. So. Oh, condo. <laughs> That's what the first thing I got was a condo. So, yeah. The key to success is, um, you know, just being true to you and just, uh, you know, um, working hard at whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, success is different in the eyes of many, you know what I mean? So it, it just really depends on what you define as being successful. But, um, you know, just being true to you and staying honest with yourself and honest with your work and through your work, I think is the, uh, you know, main definition of being successful. I love reading books, you know, I read it often. Um, right now I'm reading a book called How to Be a Man by Glenn O'Brien. You should check it out. Man or Woman, you should read it. It's a great book. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Hunter S. Thompson books, you know, um, Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas, Rum Diary. Um, those are the main, you know, books that really influenced me and touched me in a way um, that had me, you know, wanting to step up my writing. Man, that's a good question. I guess they would call it uh, something like Honest Cowboy or something like that. <laughs> oh, what I was? What was I? And, uh, I don't know. I was probably a cowboy. <laughs> Another talent I have besides for making music. Um, I don't know. Being friendly to everyone. <laughs> Something pasta, I don't know. Maybe chicken pasta. <laughs> My biggest fear is not being um, me and losing myself and, you know, losing my integrity and dignity and just who I am as a person. Oh man, the ideal woman for me is just someone who is uh, honest and loving and caring and understanding. Well, uh, with my ink, you know, I, I very much try to tell a story, you know, through my uh, tattoo work and um, I definitely pick artists who are, um, I guess, you know, they, you know, like my hands is done by Burt Crack, you know, he's known for knuckles. I mean, um, he's known for top of the hands and BJ Betts did my knuckles. He's known for, you know, knuckles. So I get the person who does the best at wherever it is that I want the tattoo placed on my body or if it's, you know, black and white or I mean black and grays or if it's color, you know, I just try to make sure I get the right tattoo artist for the job. And, um, you know, like again, I make sure that it tells a story and it explains something about my life and what I've been through. Man, that's a good question. I would say John Mayer or Nas. I think I could make great music with those guys. Bruce Springsteen also. October is the date. Uh, it might be later, but, you know, right now we got October set in. And, um, yeah, there's no title to it right now. We're just working on tracks and working on music and trying to get the sound together. But it's definitely going to be something special. It's my first debut album. So, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, as usual. Favorite superhero? I don't have one. Me. My mom. She's a superhero. I love you, mom. My favorite gangster movie of all time would have to be Minister Society. Yeah, I mean, most definitely, you know, he just happened to be in the store where I was playing my music for the first piece of music that or body of work that I've ever put together in the studio. I played it in a store where my friends was hanging out at, and he actually walked in there and heard it. And he just told me that, you know, he appreciated the music and felt that I should continue to, you know, strive at being an artist and doing what I'm doing and that was just enough motivation in itself from somebody that I grew up at, you know admiring to say that to me was just the battery in the back to basically continue to get keep writing and stay in the studio. Oh uh, man he just said you know um, no one or nothing can stop what God has for you you know so it's just uh, 
that's pretty much the best advice that he's given me so far. I mean, he's given me a lot of great advice. He's been in the game for a while, and he's uh, definitely very helpful when it comes to, you know, how to conduct yourself and how to prepare yourself when you're getting in the studio and working on projects. But um, that's probably the truest thing he's ever said is that, you know, no one or nothing can stop what God has for you. So.